Hello everybody, Earthlings, you're listening to Bonov, and this is his developer commentary for Escape from the Underworld, best game ever. So I'm just going to jump right into it here, because the game jumps right into it. Uh, you start out going left, the idea here is that, um, it's sort of a subtle thing, you know, the, the main character in this game, um, sort of, unlike a lot of the other stuff I've done, is like more of an antagonist. So I kind of start out right off the bat making you go left, where the usual like platforming uh, trope is to go right. So it's sort of an early precedent for the fact that you are evil. You go against the flow. You're a badass motherfucker. This room over here has got some kicking angel statues. And uh, I actually count them out to make exactly seven. And then you'll notice one over here is kind of broken. Hmm. You know, hint hint or something. Oh snap. So, this is kind of weird. Alright, so I'm gonna get to this part with the little villagers. Um, and, yeah, it was kind of on purpose here. You walk up to them and it tells you to press Z. And if you actually press Z. It talks to them, right? No, it doesn't talk to them, Steve. Oh. Pressing Z is your sword button, which you find out. Um, and it's sort of meant to be, like, another thing, like the walking left idea, where you, you have this expectation of, like, what is supposed to happen. And the game kind of throws you for a loop and um, makes the opposite happen in a way. That kind of shows what an evil motherfucker you are. So now you are fighting for your life, killing angels. And it is actually possible to kill all of them before you are caught. If you are good enough. Thankfully, I made this game, so I am good enough, and I just killed all of them. So all y'alls can suck on it. But no matter what you do, this guy gets you. And he pulls you over here. One thing I did in this game, um, which was kind of experimental for me, was one, I did all the storytelling uh, without any text or dialogue. Two, I never take control away from the player, except for this one segment technically where you can't really move. If you jam on the buttons, you kind of shake a little bit. But, uh, I mean, yeah, for the most part, you're pretty much always in control of the game, which I'm kind of proud of. It's pretty indie, you know, it's sort of showing, I guess you could say that I'm, I'm taking full advantage of the medium that I'm working with games without, you know, using text or film to convey my ideas. Just pretty indie, you know. Oops. I guess I shouldn't have stood that close to the edge. Try it again. In fact, I'm gonna dodge over here. Um, for those of you who don't know this game, uh, it's called Escape from the Underworld. I made it for Indie Combat during the month of October 2010. Uh, the idea was that I was competing against this other dude named Andrew Brophy. Uh, <laughs> and basically, we had the month to make a game using elements of our opponent's games. So, for this game, uh, well, Andrew Brophy's made a lot of exploration platformers, first of all. So, this is kind of the same vein as that. Uh, the bunny ears are taken from his game Polka Dot, which has a bunny with bunny ears, and the wings are from the same game. And then later on you get the sword from this game of his called Sword Buster, which I like a lot. And, uh, yeah, that's a game. Um, well, actually, like, when, we, when Andrew first challenged me in Indie Combat, my, uh, my original idea was that you would, uh, like a game where you had the sword from Sword Buster and you could fly around. But instead of being like an arcade, like high score game, it was like an exploration sort of thing where you could like fly in and clear a room full of enemies with your sword, and it was awesome. So that was kind of the basic idea, and that's where this started off as. Um, yes. But uh, then I kind of grew like this whole like mythology around it where you have like this angel guy, you start with your powers, then you lose them. It's kind of. The main character himself is kind of like a reverse of this one character from a game of Andrews called, uh, I think it, Another World or something. And it's this guy whose name's Spectre, and he's like white with like a black outline. This guy's black with a white outline. You know. Yeah. Uh. So like I said, I did a lot of experimental things in this game, with the storytelling, also with the art style. It's, you know, solid colors. Oh my goodness. I died, guys. Solid colors, uh... 
one thing about this game that was a little, a little different than my other stuff too is that I used someone else's platforming engine. Uh, I didn't want to like spend too much time. I should be paying attention to my playing. I didn't want to spend too much time uh, like programming the like the basic platforming stuff because I only had a month to work on it. So I uh, took went to one of my favorite games, Spelunky, looked up the platform engine that Derek you used for that, and uh, basically used it for myself. And when I and I, I started playing out the features, and um, I was pretty impressed with some of the stuff. I mean, that's they had like this like really good like collision detection with slopes and stuff. And that's when I got my idea to basically do the entire game like completely hand drawn with no like right angles or anything, which makes it look a lot more I guess handcrafted. Gives it a lot more of a you know special touch to it. The colors are kind of simple, but I mean it wasn't that simple to put together as far as you know making the levels and whatnot. All right. Well, clearly I suck at this game. <laughs> it starts off pretty hard. The idea is that I mean, you, you start off with a lot of your powers, um, and you you know then you, when they're taken away from you, you really go like all the way down the ladder, bottom of the rung. You have nothing. You are like pitiful, and everything kills you. And then when you like as you work your way back up, it's like really satisfying to get all your powers back. Like the uh, like the health power ups, for example. Like in Zelda, you know, you get four hearts, and that's and then you get like one extra hit. In this game, every like little health power up is worth an extra hit. And when you have only one hit, getting a second hit is like literally doubling your health bar. <laughs> yeah, and each subsequent one is like it's. I mean, it's it's a it's a pretty different level of power. Like each health pickup that you get. Wow. God. I I really suck at this game. Whoever made this game like is a huge dick and hates his players. So yeah, another idea I had for this game was um, I mean as far as like the power growth, um, I wanted it to start off where you well I mean that's how it plays. Like when it starts off, like once you're in the underworld, you start off you can only move left and right. You can't even jump. It's like the most basic, like, uh, as far as I can tell, like, really the most basic conceived, like, movement you can have. Just, like, only two directions. Um, and then I had, like, the meteor falling, like, mini game, I guess you call out of that, where I basically, like, I just wanted to have a little bit of gameplay where you were only moving left and right. And then, from there, uh, then you get the ability to jump, which, like, really radically changes, like, the way you explore, like, the world around you, because once you can jump, you know, you're not just exploring horizontally, you're also exploring vertically, you can actually leave the room that you start in you know, etc. Then, you know, there's the sword, which actually gives you the ability to combat the enemies who before then could, like, pretty easily destroy you. And then, uh, was a dash, which is sort of a minor upgrade, as far as the other ones go. And then the wings, like, of course, rapidly increase your ability to navigate across the world. Basically, I'm getting at is that each power-up you collect, like, really, like, radically, like, expands your your like a list of abilities, places you can visit, and I guess your overall like sense of power. So yeah, kind kinda like my little take on the Metroidvania formula. The music for this game is really cool, by the way, if you didn't notice. Uh, it's made by Prophecy, like a lot of my other games. Um, and I, I think, I've probably told this story before, but my relationship with Prophecy is, is kind of an interesting one. I mean, I met him a few years ago. Uh, he made a really cool video game remix that I liked, and I emailed him about it. And then uh, I, I got him to send me some music files, and since then, basically, like, he's never composed music specifically for my game. But he's like, he could basically composes on his own as a hobby, and then he'll give me the music that he's made, and I find a way to use it. Which is part of the reason why I think it comes out so well, because he's not really, he's not making music to fit my idea, he's making music for himself. So it's a lot more personal to him, I think. So these files that I used for this game, these songs, I've had for a couple years, some of them, or some even more than that. Um, but the main idea here, the reason why I picked the songs that I did was that uh, there's sort of this motif of like these creepy female vocals that's in every song that I used here. 
um, which I think go really well with like, the game's feel. Some of them have like lyrics. I can never really catch them though. Except for the the boss song, that I can get some of those lyrics, but not many. Another thing that really influenced me in making this game was this um, it's this really popular webcomic right now called Homestuck, which uh, I've been reading a lot lately. Most of my friends are. I'm getting people into it. It's it's kind of a big thing. Um, there's this character in there called Jack Noir. He's kind of the main bad guy, and like he he has like a similar appearance to has a similar appearance to like the main character in this game. Uh, you know, like Solid Black. He also has, like this like wings and sword and shit. So. Um, I mean, like, it wasn't really, like, uh, I didn't base the game directly on that, but I think that, I mean, looking back on it, like, it, it's pretty similar, and I think that he definitely had, like, some impact on, like, how I looked at the game, and, like, the main character in this. Health pickups. Traveling through. Yes? What do you want? Okay. One thing I did for this game that I also did for Crazy Over Goo was I basically only had like a few songs and rather than like playing specific songs for different areas, I just had like them loop between each other. Um, the main reason was that was, I mean I didn't really have like music that fit the different area themes very well and honestly I didn't have that much music at all. Um, so you know, I figured I would just make the best of what I had, you know, make a couple songs that looped for the entire game. And they're, they're pretty good songs and they're both a decent length, so I don't think you'll never really ever get tired of them. Plus, to me, it, it also sort of works with the whole, like, theme of, I guess, like, a exploration sort of thing, where there's no, like, set music for each area. There's, what you hear in each area kind of depends on, like, when you get there, which doesn't seem like a really, like, player-customized thing, but it, it's... Sort of just showing, I guess, that the game is that there's there's variability here. That it's not always like you don't you're not really getting not all of what you hear and see is like my vision and what I decided would be like playing at that time. I don't know if that makes sense to anyone besides me, but it makes sense to me. So all y'all can suck it. You know, other thing about this game is that I made it in a month, which is kind of crazy when you think about it because it's pretty big. Um. I mean, I'm I'm proud of it, okay? So, you know, some people think it's not that great. I'm pretty happy with how it came out. This song in particular that's playing right now, I actually, um, when I was working on Cowboy Kill with Andrew, uh, I had this song as, like, the temp for, like, our Halloween. I guess, all right, Cowboy, in Cowboy Kill, there's, like, a few different, like, themed worlds. There's, like, a samurai world, a robot world, and like a Halloween world, and then a uh, like a fantasy world. So this was like the placeholder music for the Halloween world, and the fact that he's it here in the game that like supposed to be using elements from his games is sort of vaguely meaningful. I'm just breezing through here. Like I made it or something. In the case it wasn't clear, I'm not really going for all the health pickups or anything, just sort of picking up the stuff that's immediately available. Yeah, I've never, before this game, I never made like an exploration platform before, but I have to say, it was a lot of fun to work on this. I uh, would definitely do it again, given the opportunity. Planning out the world and stuff was really fun. I remember, like, in the first week of, uh, like, the game project, like, I mean, the, our initial set of rules said that we can only work on the game for an hour a day, which was really killing me because um, I have a tendency to really overwork on games, and, like, when I get started on a project, I really can't stop. So trying to limit myself to an hour a day was really painful, and, like, to work around that, what I was doing was, like, when I wasn't sitting at my computer literally on the game, I was, uh, like, 
like sitting like during my classes and stuff I had was like taking notes and stuff on the game like I drew a map for the game world uh, during like my English class even like I went to like a supply store and bought colored pencils and then like just drew on the map like I made like a really high detail thing because I couldn't think of doing anything else. <laughs> 